welcome back, everyone. Um, you've just watched the trailer of the documentary called Red Sea. And we are lucky to have um, Mrs. Nancy Bowie, who is the executive um, producer of the documentary itself. Um, before I introduce Mrs. Nancy Bowie, I'd like to also introduce myself to you. Um, my name is uh, New Chu. I am currently an assistant professor in politics uh, and public affairs, uh, political science at Denison University. And being here throughout the day, I've heard many stories and I've shared um, many of the stories that have been shared here. In particular, my own story. Um, so my father is actually someone who has very consciously distanced himself from politics after coming to the US. Um, he's a pragmat very pragmatic um, man. He's very resilient. Um, and he has very consciously chosen to distance himself from politics. So it is all the more surprising that his oldest daughter not only refused to study pharmacy <laughs> and also um, wanted at first to be a creative writer, but then went on to study political science and then went on to devote uh, her entire career and seven, 10 years of her life studying Vietnamese politics of all things. Um, and it's also somehow not coincidental that what I've chosen to focus on in my own scholarship and research of Vietnamese politics are things that are most contentious. I study protest, I research social movements, I study social mobilization in Vietnam, particularly issues related to land rights, um, resistance for labor rights, for the right to association, um, and how the Vietnamese state in turn manage and respond to these contentious claims. So it is my honor to uh, introduce our next speaker, Mrs. Nancy Boy. She is a renowned writer, an acclaimed documentary film producer, and a dedicated advocate for both environmental and human rights causes with a passion for preserving and sharing the Vietnamese American immigrant experience, she has made significant contributions to public awareness and education. In particular, in 2004, Nancy founded the Vietnamese American Heritage Foundation, dedicated to documenting the rich tapestry of Vietnamese American immigrant journey. So VAHF, Vietnamese American Heritage, mission is to create a lasting record for the benefit of the public and future generations. In 2010, she spearheaded, excuse me, she spearheaded a monumental 500 oral history projects, personally conducting interviews with over 700 individuals for the Vietnamese Diaspora Digital Archive. To date, this archive has garnered significant attention, also an impressive 15 million views, right? serving as a vital resource for understanding um, the, the Vietnamese Diaspora. In 2014, Nancy then went on to produce Master Hua's Requiem, a poignant short documentary that touched hearts and minds. She didn't stop. In 2015, she delved into the production of Vietnam America, um, which a DVD is also on the table over there. And it's a captivating full-length documentary that explores the intersection of Vietnamese and American culture, which is part of what this conference is exactly about. In 2016, Nancy, along with a group of like-minded friends, established the Justice for Formosa's Victim Association, a nonprofit organization solely committed to helping victims seek justice and healing victims of the Formosa environmental disaster. And if you haven't known what the disaster is about, the trailer um, that we show gives you a little bit of a um, overview, insight into what the disaster is about. So without further ado, um, please uh, join me in welcoming Nancy. Uh, 
come here with me. Uh, we have Phong Nguyen Convent. She is also um, the treasurer of two organizations, Vietnamese American Ethics Foundation and uh, Justice for Formosa Victims. Yes, um, first of all, I would like to say thanks to all the journalists and filmmakers in Vietnam who kindly donated all the pictures and photos to our organization. And most of them now either in prison or in hiding because the Vietnamese government pursuing them. Uh, my uh, speech will be divided into four parts. The first one is uh, motivation and hope. The second is strategy and support. The third is outcome and signif significance so far. And the last one will be encouragement, disappointed, and challenges. Here's the first part. The environmental disaster 2016 would affect four central provinces of Vietnam, Hà Tinh, Quảng Bình, Quảng Trị, and Thừa Thiên, was caused by Formosa Hà Tinh, a subsidiary of the Formosa Plastic Group. This incident had global repercussion due to its profound impact on the environment, ocean, and the livelihood of nearly five million people, particularly those in the fishing industry. Formosa initially denied the disaster for three months and attempted to conceal the incident. However, mounting public pressure and within Vietnam and internationally, along with the finding of a study involving over 100 scientists, including some from abroad, conclusively established that Formosa had released substantial quantity of toxic waste into the environment. These harmful pollutants, including cyanide, chlor, heavy metal, and other toxins, led to mass fish death and the destruction of marine life. On June 27, 2016, Formosa issued a public apology and pledged to provide 500 million US dollars in compensation without comprehensive and accessing the damage. Unfortunately, the affected victim were marginalized and unable to voice their opinion. Where as Formosa and Vietnamese government collaborated in determining the compensation and amount, both parties continued to obscure the truth and outcome the scientific study would never disclose to the public. The Vietnamese government cite national security concern as a reason for its inability to present the substantial evidence. In response to these challenges, a close-knit group of my acquaintance, pri primarily composed of VAHF Vietnamese American Heritage Foundation member, a 501c3 organization established in 2004, with the core objective of safeguarding and raising awareness about Vietnamese American experience for the educational purpose, felt a compelling need to take proactive measure, like many Vietnamese community in the US and worldwide, our initially response including collecting monetary contribution to assist the affected individual through the Vietnamese Catholic Church. As time passed, it became increasingly apparent that the compensation provided by the Vietnamese government on behalf of Formosa was insufficient and unjust. The situation worsened when the victim pursued suit for justice through a civil lawsuit were met with rejection, resulting in increasing fear and intensified oppression. In response to these challenges, Catholic Bishop Nguyen Thai Hợp and priests from the affected region sought international assistance. The message to the global Vietnamese community was a powerful question. What action did you take 
when the environmental disaster struck central Vietnam. Adding to the gravity of the situation, image, images and videos in most respecting banner with the blue leaves help us to sue Formosa. Held by priests and victims brutally beaten on their way to court for an appeal. The distressing visual were widely shared on platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, and other social media networks causing global shockwave. In the face of this ongoing struggle, numerous Vietnamese American communities have come together to organize protests with some community like the one in San Jose, California, conducting the demonstration every week. A commitment that had continued for over 70 weeks, and I believe some of the organizers here today. Our group had a significant encounter with Bishop Nguyen in Seattle, where he was advocating for support, solidifying our unwavering commitment to a long and challenging journey. In 2017, in response to the pressing need, we established Justice for Fumosa Victim, JFFV, as a 501c3 organization dedicated to assist the victims. After an exhausted three years investigation, which included in enlisting a legal team spanning from Taiwan, Canada, and the US, and collaborating with various NGO organizations, we effectively assist 7,874 victims in initiating lawsuit for compensation in Taiwan and the US Federal Court in New Jersey. In, furthermore, we lodged a formal complaint with the UN Human Rights Commissioner. This achievement in, is a landmark accomplishment in Taiwan history, cross-nation lawsuit. Yes, and then strategy and support. From a legal standpoint, our primary revolve around the leveraging Formosa admission to its guilt, preparing for a trial accordingly. We secure support from global Vietnamese diaspora by organizing eight fundraising events in Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, San Jose, Norway, and Denmark. Notably, we obtained technical assistance from extreme university in the US, Canada, and Taiwan. However, the absence of the comprehensive environmental le legislation in Vietnam posed a significant challenge. With the potential to, uh, <laughs> With the, with the potential that um, influence money and politics to compromise the legal framework. In contrast, Taiwan legal system was robust, but its provision for addressing overseas business operations could have been more comprehensive. In response, we sought advocacy support from organizations dedicated to environmental justice and human rights causes. Furthermore, we proactive engage with legislators in Taiwan and the US, collaborating to navigate the hurdle within the legal process. While we acknowledge the substantial challenge, we steadfastly believe that the justice can be realized through persistent and well-orchestrated effort. Past triumphs said that the case of Ching Vinh Bing, a Vietnamese living overseas who emerged victoriously in civil lawsuit against the Vietnamese government for damage, served as president of sources in inspiration for Mosa Hai, now a law firm, including one with a lawyer who had reserved at a judge for many years. They ex exploited legal loophole to demand that the victim have their power of attorney notarized by Vietnamese government for their lawyer, fully aware that victim would struggle to be overcome this hurdle. The JFFV Association, alongside with Vietnamese American Community International, 
non-government organization confront this issue. And ultimately, the Taiwanese Minister of Foreign Affairs had to intervene. However, this struggle extended for over two and a half years. Through this experience, we understand that the vital role of public support in this complex legal case. And then we have outcome and significance so far. We have successfully filed a lawsuit in Taiwan on behalf of, one again, 7,874 victims against Momosa Plastic Group in 22 and 22 of their subsidiary, utilizing four legal systems, Taiwan, Vietnam, the US, and the inter international environmental law. This is a historic lawsuit in Taiwan, having overcome two rejections in lower court, with the Taiwan Supreme Court recognizing the case against Formosa in October 2020. And you can imagine how happy and how, mo how much motion the victim in Vietnam feel when they have the news that Taiwan gave the jurisdiction to the victim. However, the, what remains to accomplish in achieving the justice for victim of the most significant environmental catastrophe in Vietnam history, the livelihood of fishermen have been irrevocably lost, forcing many sick employment to distant provinces, even mortgage their home to secure jobs in neighboring countries like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Europe, that journey can be perilous, as tragically illustrated by the death of 39 Vietnamese individuals discovered in a container at the British border in 2019. A tragedy resonated globally. Among the DC, 35 health from the four central provinces affected by Formosa disaster. The scope of the tragedy extends to children who are often separate from their parents and compelled leave your grandparent or relative. Due to prevailing circumstances, many children have had no to ab abandon their education due to their parents' inability to afford tuition fee. Winning the case is crucial to enable the children to return to school and provide the victim the means to rebuild their livelihood and village. The campaign had effectively illuminated the previous overlooked connection with between environmental concern and the Vietnamese government unwavering focus on economic growth. Other endeavors are poised to catalyze heightened attention to environmental injustice and human rights issues. However, re recent events, including the arrest and imprisonment of Nguyen Thi Khang, a recipient of the Golden Environmental Prize and the apprehensive of the five environmental activists Hoàng Thị Minh Hồng, Mai Văn Lợi, Đặng Đình Bách, and Bách Hồng Dương underscore the ongoing urgency surrounding ecological justice and human rights in Vietnam, which hold excellent significance for the Vietnamese American community. We were talking about how we can reconcile with the Vietnam uh, government. With this act, we ask ourselves many times, many days, that how can we consult? On the other hand, the arduous and persistent struggle through challenging had maintained the unwavering trust of overseas Vietnamese in their homeland. Over the past half century, despite the Communist Party and the state invest, investing considerably research and effort to propagandizing, pro propagandizing that the idea that overseas Vietnam are divisive, anti-homeland, and anti-people in Vietnam. It is widely recognized that overseas Vietnamese have consistently sent nearly 20 billion annually to help Vietnam economy survive to this day. This support had endure in the face of numerous wrong decisions and the unwavering maintenance of the one-party regime protect its interests. And then finally, encouragement and dis disappointment and challenge. 
the overwhelming support from the environmental and human rights organization and legislature in the U.S. Taiwan have been tremendous source of encouragement. From the victims from Taiwan, the U.S., Vietnam, and various international NGOs united established the International Form Formosa Alliance. In our proactive pursuit of justice, we have orchestrated a press conference within Taiwan Parliament and deliver appeal during the Formosa and annual shareholder meeting intend to compel top management and shareholder to take responsibility for their misdeeds. Furthermore, we have collaborated on congressional briefing held at the U.S. Congress. The IMFB is leading the global hunger strike before Formosa factory in Point Comfort on October 31st, 2023, three days from now. Our demand include fair compensation for Formosa victims, comprehensive environmental remediation effort, and independent study to prevent future ecological disaster, and releasing all prisoners in connection with this cause. We also are urging the U.S. Congress to investigate Formosa business practices. While substantial progress has been made, additional challenges remain, particularly in establishing a more comprehensive environmental legal framework in Taiwan and more significant commitment to human rights concern. The introduction of Taiwan National Action Plan is a no noble step in the right direction, although it remains a recommendation rather than a mandate. This plan represents progress toward holding multinational corporations accountable for their action in foreign countries and addressing concurrent human rights issues. However, there is still much work to be done. On the other hand, with the steadfast support from overseas Vietnamese and various global NGOs, JFFB remain dedicated to pursuing justice through legal avenues until it's achieved. For underprivileged and voiceless in Vietnam, you can demonstrate your support by going to the website for imfa.org and sign up for the global hunger strike. This time, we don't have to do it alone. Diane Wilson, a chairwoman of San Antonio Waterkeeper, a 2023 Goldman Environmental Prize recipient who fought for Musa for polluting the waterway in South Texas, undertook a hunger strike to win $50 million lawsuit for the people in South Texas. She led the hunger strike this time to demand justice for Formosa victims, she stated. What happened to the Vietnamese fishermen and their fishery is what happened to us in Texas. This wrong had to be made right, and Formosa must not be allowed to destroy another fishery. That's be all for now. Thank you very much for listening. And I... <laughs> One more thing, you may see this, and please come to our website and then join our hunger strike. I will have to go home tomorrow, shorten my trip here to be there with Diane Gusen. We go hung hunger until Formosa respond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. So um, I would like to open up the floor for questions. Um, any questions or comments for Nancy regarding Formosa or environmental activism in general or um, transnational mobilization for environmental rights in Vietnam? My name is Tao Tu from the Vietnamese Community of Oregon. I have a question for you. So you said that your organization again a certain fund to compensate for the Formosa system. And I wonder, how can you reach the people over there and distribute the little fund to each of them? Also, how can you help the people who we call environmental activists? 
to get out of prison over there. This is because I have been told that after President Biden visited Vietnam, one of the environment activists have been in prison. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Nancy, hold on. I'm going to try to uh, get, uh, gather everyone question in the interest of time. Um, so any other questions for Nancy? And then one more, if anyone have Thank one you. more question, you can think of one ahead of time. My main question for Nancy is, um, I, re I still remember the impact that uh, our Vietnamese had to live through during the Formosa times. In hindsight, what have your organization done to prevent similar things from happening in Vietnam? Okay. Thank you. One more question from this side of the audience. Um, thank you. Um, my question is about the lawsuit in Taiwan. Um, if you can share about the legal strategy um, of the lawsuit, then that would be that would be very uh, I would be uh, very appreciate. Um, and also, what are the legal challenges you have uh, you are you facing um, in Taiwan? Thank you. So to summarize, the first question is on distribution right, um, of funds to victims in Vietnam themselves. The second question is related to how prevention, sort of how can you prevent something like this, um, like Formosa, from happening again? And lastly, the third question is regarded to, uh, re related to the lawsuit in Taiwan and legal strategies going forward. Yes, the first question, how can we pay the victim? We not suing anybody, but help the victim sue Formosa. So the result of the lawsuit, if the court grant them how much money, the lawyer will distribute directly to the victim. We understand that Vietnam government may uh, interfere in that. So we already uh, set up a um, a commission, you know, going for uh, four elements. First is the lawyer, second is Formosa, third is independent, and then another one is the group of uh, uh, NGO. So those will have um, the uh, right uh, to um, monitor how the money will be distributed, and then any of those um, you know, a uh, group uh, uh, violate uh, into uh, report been reported that violate uh, this clause from the court. They will be, um, I mean, uh, I mean, punished. Yes, that's how we do it. The second uh, question is how we can get human, uh, I mean, uh, prisoner out of the prison uh, for the. Um, Advocates who are in prison because of this, we counted 24 of them now in, still in prison. Even though in the beginning was about 50 of them. So because of their, their um, sentence is uh, up, so they out or, um, uh, or some of them even got released into the US because of the intervention of the Vietnamese com community here. Uh, just like Chen Thi Nga, so on and so on, so you know about it. But how we can do that, just like a non I mean, um, NGO, we have no money, we have no nothing. So we based on the, all the support from, uh, like I said in my speech, is from other organization, for the community, uh, from uh, legislator in Taiwan and uh, in, in the U.S and that we constantly, like I said, that consistency is the key. You know, you cannot do it today and you forgot about four weeks and say, oh, what happened to them? But we have to do a consistency. You know, you have to press on it and then you will get a result. Of course, we cannot do it overnight or we don't have a power to release them right away like this, but with consistency and then pressing to it, we will get a result. Uh, question number three is prevent in Vietnam. Uh, we have no authority in Vietnam, but we can uh, 
advocate. You know, we uh, over here, JFFB is the best mall. We about 100 uh, members uh, throughout, throughout the world. You know, like in US, we have about 30 in Europe, so far and so on. So uh, we need to advocate that if we can win this lawsuit, it can be a precedent for all the foreigner company who investing in Vietnam see that environmental is very important. You know, they just not can go there, bribe money to the government and do whatever they want, like right, right now. But if we win this lawsuit, the, all the, those uh, community, I mean, all those uh, company have to be be careful because if the government don't sue them, if uh, a victim in Vietnam can sue them, the overseas Vietnamese and all the organizations can help victims sue them and get resolved. So it's very vital for us to win this lawsuit. And I, I'm here to call to your heart, please help us, anything you can, because don't bore me alone. Don't leave me alone. Yes. And then uh, about the lawsuit, uh, we had uh, um, two denial from um, district court and then the high court. But luckily, we have um, Supreme Court. They based on the piece of law. I believe it uh, like the the twenty um, is 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 very much is it come come new uh, early uh, not not too long ago. They uh, said, I and mean, the law said that um, if a um, plaintiff or the victim or, or, or the, yeah, the victim, they are foreigner. If they cannot um, do it where the, the tour happened, they can sue in Taiwan. So that's uh, our legal standpoint. That's how we got it. The um, Supreme Court give us the jurisdiction in Taiwan. And uh, then the second thing, you asked about strategy, yeah. Like I already talked in the speech that the strategy we have, like you all know that uh, Formosa already bows their heads, say that we sorry we did it, and here if we want to pay $500 million. So that is very good for, the, for the, our lawsuit because we don't have to deal with it. We have to prove that they did it. But they admit that they did it, so we don't want. Here it's just the, very much like the lawsuit for damage. And then the um, people who did it already admitted, so we need to, the jurisdiction and lawsuit procedure is very tough in this case. I have so, we have some lawyers sitting around here. If they want to say something about it, I welcome them. But uh, if we can, go through the court procedure, um, and we can uh, win that, the lawsuit very much in our favor. Yes. Thank you, Nancy. So we'll take two more questions, and then, that will, um, then we'll let our rapporteur summarize the conversation. So please. OK, I'm uh, Greg Nagel. I'm an environmental scientist. I've spent most of the last 10 years in uh, Vietnam. I went there to try to work on Agent Orange. Uh, I'm actually a forest ecologist, so I don't know much about toxicology. So I was in Hanoi during the Formosa disaster, and I was on a large Facebook group called Hanoi Massive, OK? Many Vietnamese and uh, foreigners. And I'm just asking questions. And uh, I'm posting information from around the world. Uh, there's many things that cause fish kills besides chemical contamination, all right? And I'm asking a lot of questions, posting information about, you know, I'm not pointing any fingers. I got in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And probably now, I always wonder when I apply for a new visa whether or not they have my number, okay? And I'm just asking questions like a good scientist, which is not what a lot of Vietnamese do, all right? And so they tried to get me kicked out of the group for simply asking questions. And that was my first encounter. I'm sorry, it's my English, where I found a lot of Vietnamese brown-nosing the government, all right? 
So it's impossible to even talk about it. And I'm not even sure now what the conclusions are about, you know, it's kind of, the chemistry was odd, right? Now, I don't remember what explained it. But since then, I've been very careful. <laughs> okay, anyway. Thank you. Do you want to now or you want to wait? If there are no questions, so Nancy, your concluding remark or comment? Okay. You are right. Um, even the scientists who involved in the study with more than 100 local and international scientists, they have to sign the release that they cannot release information whatsoever. So I, uh, we try to get in touch with some of them, one in Japan and one in uh, um, Germany. And we beg them, uh, that's, uh, please give us some, you know, some clue uh, how are you involved in that and why is you guys uh, conclude that Formosa would the cause. He said that I'm sorry. I am sorry I cannot do that because I already signed the form. So, and then Formosa now is uh, a, what is a dilemma in Vietnam? If you just say Formosa, like you said, that you may be follow it and you may end up in prison if you post it on your social media. So, I mean, but what, I, what I'm just explaining, that does not mean that you cannot do anything. Yes, you can still can do, because why? Because Vietnam have many, many companies come into Vietnam to invest, and they need money from international money fund. They need to borrow money from this bank to that bank, bank. And if they continue to doing that, they cannot have money. If they don't have money, they can do much. So yeah, there is the loophole. There is place we can come in. There is a hope. So not mean all the problem I just uh, talk about here, that not mean that we uh, run to the dead end. No. Thank you. Adrian, we're fortunate to have Adrian again um, from Columbia University to summarize, synthesize the conversation so far. Hello. Um, yes, thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing with us and everyone for your questions. Um, so Nancy shared with us about this very complex case of the Formosa chemical spill in Vietnam, um, which affected thousands of victims um, and who mobilized and gained support internationally, utilizing four legal systems across Vietnam, Taiwan, the U.S., and the international uh, law through the U.N. Um, in our Q&A, uh, we brought up questions about how um, support is being distributed to Formosa's victims, um, how we as an international community can help get activists out of prison, um, and how we can prevent something like this from happening again. And Nancy emphasized that consistency is key. We have to stay diligent, we have to keep paying attention, even years after the incident, and we have to keep pressing for results. Um, in terms of preventing this from happening again, uh, it's important to recognize that if, if this lawsuit is won, if justice um, is, is attained for the victims now, it sets a precedence for the future where companies can't just come into Vietnam and do what they want and uh, not take responsibility for it. Um, so staying consistent with this case today will prevent um, tragedies like this from happening in the future. And I think to summarize, um, this case really highlights the truly international reach of the Vietnamese community and Vietnamese identity. Um, it shows the diaspora's ties to home um, and how we care about the people in Vietnam, even if we don't live in Vietnam, even if we have a difficult history um, with that land. And it's proven in Nancy's words that um, overseas Vietnamese are not um, anti-homeland, we are not anti-Vietnam, we care deeply about the people there, and um, we will organize and mobilize for justice when people are harmed. Um, and I think this connects beautifully with um, the talk this morning with Congressman Gao um, about our values of human rights and perseverance um, as a community that stretches across nations and across the world. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Please don't forget to sign so, up 
With the hunger strike. Thank you. Yes. So the tổng kết bằng tiếng Việt hả thầy Tường? Không cần. À thôi. In the in the interest of time, without further ado, our next panel. <cười>